Why, hello, welcome everybody here to the old, the old Seneca live stream. We're here, we had a special week this week. All the folks in the old 2D department were slaving away all week making cartoons for you, for you guys tonight. Well, mostly for them because they had to make it anyway, but they spent the whole week making the first sequences for their films. They had basically rough boards at the beginning of this week. And still, pretty much the Monday night, they had rough boards. And now we have fully colored sequences, for the most part, that we're very excited to share with you guys. A few thank yous off the top here. We want to thank our president, Dr. David Agnew, uh, Kurt Muller, our dean, Tina, our interim chair, Sean Craig, our wonderful coordinator, and all of the faculty that uh, the 2D stream has at their disposal. So we got Rui, we got Bluestein, we got Steph, we got uh, Dave Bass, we got Anda, we got Ashley, we got Matt, and uh, we had a special guest help us this week too. Uh, Nicholas came in and helped us with some rigging too, so thanks Nick. And special thanks to Christian Potenza who came in and gave a lecture at the beginning of the week as well. So it's enough about us and we're gonna go and we're gonna throw it to the students. So we're pretty excited to share with you these films. now. What, what, are, what are we watching right now? We're watching the first sequence of these films. And the students, we have about 40 grads that are going to be graduating into the animation industry. They're 2D grads, which means that they make uh, films in Harmony and Photoshop, and they draw, and they're very talented, and they're hireable in April. But they're going to make uh, between three and five minute films. So we got four of them coming at you, and we're going to show you the opening sequence this week. It's sequence week. It's sequence week. So let's go meet the grads, shall we? Let's go meet the grads. Grads, hello. How are you? Hello. Hi, hello. 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 Bring it up. Hello. Yes. Hello. hello. Camera's hello. on. Hello. 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 So guys, you were in, you, you were making cartoons this whole week. Was that, was that hard was it fun was it life sucking where are we at exhausting i'm tired i slept in it was a fun experience it was I am an delirious experience what time did anybody <laughs> have to pull an all-nighter or no no. I yeah, usually want some I think in it felt like it. i stayed up until 7 a.m most i went to was like till midnight but then that was it yeah we had somebody who's 7 a.m Hello. Oh, oh, what were you, what were you oh, doing no. till 7 a.m.? That's pretty late. I was animating. Animating. Oh boy. Oh, no. For the pooch. Okay. Yeah, you guys you guys have some tight some tough sequences in that opening. So we'll we'll check it out. Uh was it a success though? Did we successfully you guys think it was a success? Did you I'd say oh, yeah. 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 I think we slayed it. Seneca slayed. Whoa. Slayed. <laughs> We'll see. Yeah, slay it, son. We'll see if uh, Lucas agrees with that in the chat. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna check it out then. So let's uh, let's throw it to the first group. Uh, everybody from Punked Punked Pooch, stick around. The rest of you guys, get out of here. Scram. Hit the alleys. Go shower. All right. Here we go. We got just the Punked Poochers in here with a themed background. Looks great, except for. Eden, but uh, we're not pointing any fingers. <laughs> All right, so uh, Aberdeen, tell us a bit about this crazy cartoon. All right, so hello, we are the Punk Pooch Group. Um, we are a group of 10, and for this sequence week, we did a film about these dogs, which you can see in our uh, background. Um, we do have a PowerPoint presentation to share about it, which we'll get more into it, but... Uh, yeah, so we've done everything from the boards, the designs, the rigging, all this week. A bit of a crunch, but we, we survived, and uh, we're we living. So. All right. So, all right, know, perfect. Let's good. throw it around your team, then. Who yeah. do we got here? All right, so I guess to introduce so, myself, well, I'm Aberdeen. Yeah, start with oh, you. Oh, sorry. So I'm Aberdeen. Um, I'm the director. So this was my pitch that I did for Pitch Week, if you remember. Um, I was the thumbnail for a bit, which I don't know how to feel about that, but <laughs> that's me. Uh, that's me. I'm the same person. Um, but yeah, so that was my role. I also also oversaw everything. And um, yeah, so I guess I'll, I'll now pass it on to our um, biz dev person. 
Does Dev introduce yourself now? <laughs> you can, uh, yeah, throw it to I, them. You can say their name if you want. Okay, you so through. or Sophia, yeah. Um, uh, my name is Sophia. I am the art director and background lead for Punk Pooch. And yeah, this is um the art style. We're this was like a huge. I kind of treated this week as a test to see how it would go and how people would be able to replicate the style, my wonderful background artists who had to listen to me all week. But I think we pulled it off really well. I think we did a great job. Nice. And uh, yeah, thank you. Let's keep, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going and then we'll drill into the departments a little bit more. So who else we got? Introduce the next member of your team. Yep. Um, we also have Nicholas or Nick who did our rigging. For Hello, team, so. my name, yeah. <laughs> my name is Nicholas Washington, I'm the rigging lead. Uh, so all the animation you see here is puppeted. So essentially we work with, we're virtual puppeteers. And so my department, along with uh, Lex and a couple other like faces, uh, we kind of make all the puppets that sort of like animate around. So we have to rig those puppets so that the animators can animate them within the sequences. And we can pass this off now to uh, the animation lead. Hello, I'm Lex. Um, and yeah, I'm the animation lead. So. Um, when people were working on their shots, I just kind of gave it a look and made some suggestions and stuff. Um, and as Nicholas like mentioned, I also helped with some of the rigging. So one of the characters, Janice, um, I was in charge of her and uh, Nick uh, rigged Fifi. Um, and yeah, um, I guess I'll pass it off to, um, is Natalie here? Go ahead, Natalie. Hello, sorry. My voice is terrible. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. Okay, I got a cold, but I tried my best this week and it was great. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, it's, it was cool working with everyone this week. We had like a tight schedule, but we were like checking out the deadlines checking the schedules to like match everyone's time and still get the work done. But at the end of the day, I just say, we got to work, work. Sorry. You were a good production manager. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess to, con to continue for there, um, I want to introduce Eden, who was our prop lead and overall prop rigger and helper. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Eden. I just did like random stuff, like various things, a little bit of animation, a little bit of prop. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun, really exciting to work on the film, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I'll... Sorry, I need it. I pass it on to Ethan, who worked on cop stuff. Hi, Ethan. Hi, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know I was, I got the spotlight. So my role on this uh, sequence week was doing the compositing, and I did some of the sound and did some of the early editing before our final uh, shot was completed and that was kind of my role. I was in charge of lighting and shading and we did the best we could with the time we had. So I can't wait for everyone to see it. Yep. Who else you got? Oh, um, who is next on the chopping block? Um, I will then pass it over to uh, some of our fellow animators. So I'll pass it off to Katya. Uh, hello. Uh, oh, that's for me. Um, yeah, I, I was, um, I helped out a, a bit with the layout and, uh, did a, a few shots, uh, of the background there and, uh, also helped with a bit of a layout. So, yeah. That's, that's basically what I did. Perfect. Right. Uh, I'll go next. I'll yeah. go next. <laughs> so hi, my name is Alexandra. I also helped out with some of the layouts and environmental design for some, uh, for the film, and I also did uh, uh, animate some shots as well. I stayed up till seven a.m. to complete it, so it was it was still pretty fun though. Like I, I'd say, it's pretty good. So <laughs> I had a lot of fun. So um, yeah, that's what I did, and then we'll pass it on to uh, Adeline. Hi. Uh... <laughs> uh, you can hear me, right? Sorry, just making yeah. sure. Yep, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Adeline. I primarily helped with animation this sequence week. 
but I also did a bit of character design beforehand. And yeah. Great. We got your team. All right. So let's go into some slides, shall we? And we'll look at your film and then we'll play the whole we'll play the whole crazy thing. So I'm going to share my screen to you guys. Whoa, don't put that in front of everybody. Give away my secrets here. All right. And we'll share sounds and that's coming up. And we'll switch the screen that I'm showing and here we go. All right. So you guys, let's put you over here. No, let's do it at the bottom. Boom. Okay, so we got you in here. Punk Pooch, you guys can see my slides? Yep. 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 All right, let's party on. So uh, Aberdeen, you take it away and then hand it off to whoever you want. Yep, sounds good. All right, well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, so uh, Punk Pooch is our film. Uh, big shout out to Natalie's sister, Jenna, for uh, doing this nice illustration. Uh, she was actually in the Seneca illustration program, so, you know, thank you. <laughs> it was very awesome. Um, yeah, so we just got our name credits, um, and I guess let's just get straight into it. Yeah. So uh, to start things off, I think to get the clear image of what we were going for for our film, I have a nice little inspiration board of some of the art styles and overall like music um, and just visuals that honestly inspired me to go for this more graphic um, 2D art style. Um, some specific standouts include the Powerpuff Girls, which was a big inspiration. Um, Panty and Stocking for you know, how they draw the hands and limbs, um, as well as Parappa the Rapper, which was one of the first inspirations um, when I was doing the early character design concepts. Um, we also have music, um, maybe just because it was college, but I kind of kind of went on a, <laughs> a little little angsty music spree there. So I was like, hmm, what if I made a film about that? And uh, here we are. Um, so yeah, so a lot of inspirations, um, but we managed to make them all combine into what we have now. Yeah. Perfect. So just a brief synopsis of our plot without giving too much away. Um, but yeah, so our story is, uh, after falling out years ago, Fifi, a guitarist poodle, has been invited to play at a venue with her old high school band, Punked Pooch. Blinded by her excitement and stardom, her expectations are crushed when her ex-friend, an old bandmate, decides to show up. Will their bitterness tarnish the performance, or will their rivalry finally come to a close? What caused their band to even break up in the first place? All will be revealed when we finish it in April. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the core of it is very, um, I want to do exploration with both friendships and just how different people take friendships ending. So I'm sure we've all had the experience of having a friend that either something went sour or just ended. Um, and like anything in the world, you know, people react to it differently. So some people might still be upset. Some people might just not acknowledge it, while others just deal with it in their own way. So, um, yeah, um, that was definitely a big motivation and a big factor in figuring out the story. And once again, um, later in the year, once you see more of our film, um, those themes will be explored both visually and just in a storytelling way. So, yeah, that's really cool. Okay. okay, next. Yep, so before I hand it off to um, Lex, who did a lot of the character work, um, I just want to briefly go over, before we introduce the characters, some early concept designs. So you can kind of see already we were going for the very stylized 2D thick outlines art style. Um, and overall, I think it uh, just plays into our idea. You also might notice it's very Sonic core and I, I'm aware I am a Sonic kid, so it's just progressively got more and more Sonic X, but I'm proud of that. I'm a Sonic fan and I'm proud, so, um, so yeah. So anyway, now I'll be passing it over to Lex so she can do some briefs about character and just overall are the final or final quote unquote designs we have for them now. Hello. Um, so yeah, this was, um, so Phoebe is our main character. Um, and uh, we really wanted to like hone down on that, like really like graphic shapey sort of style for 
um her design uh so there's like a lot of like um like really like big shapes and stuff involved and um to sort of tie in the main leads as well there's a subtle motif with each one so Fifi here has like a bunch of stars and stuff um and it kind of goes in line as well with her being the star of like um the film and um so a few sort of like um bits about her is that um uh like she sorry i'm like mixing up all my <laughs> words right now um but for uh her design graphic style um i guess like move on to the next slide sorry i'm like mixing up my words right now um but yeah and then uh this is the other titular character um who is Phoebe's rival for her she's a lot less um kind of like loud and stuff she's more reserved compared to Fifi um she yeah she's a lot more common collected um but she is just as braggy as Fifi and um uh while Fifi is a poodle she's a Doberman um and for her design in particular we are still figuring out a few of the things but uh, this is just to give you an idea of what she'll look like in the final film. Um, and we can move on to the next one. And these are some, like, other important characters. Uh, Janice plays a pretty important role as well. She's the one who um, gets them to play uh, in the band together again. And uh, Darcy is kind of just, she's just chilling there. <laughs> Um, but she's the bassist of the group, um, and, um, yeah, so Jancy is all bubbly and happy, and Darcy's pretty, like, chill and stuff, and, uh, yeah, um, I also, guess- Also, before we move on, sorry yes. to interrupt, I just want to say- <laughs> No worries. The middle picture? Um, oh, yeah, I should probably- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just kind of there, and I didn't really acknowledge it. Yeah, um, those are their parents, mm -hmm. um, their step-siblings. Um, if they bear any resemblance to any public figures, that's coincidence. It's fine. <laughs> um, won't tell. Won't tell. <laughs> won't tell yeah. if that's Amy Lee and Guy Fieri, you know? Nah, no, I can't even see what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can move on to the next portion of the slides. And I'm going to hand it off to Soph who uh, did a lot of the background work for the film. Yeah, this is my job, yay. Um, not all of these were done by me. Um, the alleyway was, down by, was done by me. The alleyway was probably the one of the first completed concepts we had. Even though it didn't directly translate to the film, it played a lot in figuring out the style we wanna go for, the line art style, the shading style. Um, at least my vision is um, not monochrome, but just um, just to create a standout color in the film. And more importantly, what would a world populated by dogs look like? We looked at some cities like New York, maybe London for like the underground nest. Um, we have a CN Tower shaped like a dog bone because of course we do. Um, we call like um we're just trying to like i want to put a lot of thought into the development of the worlds they're in and just think of a world like inhabited by anthropomorphic dogs i like really have fun with the concept rather than just a city and dogs are in it what would it like what are the chances for like jokes and like visual and like visual like references so to speak to kind of like elevate the work uh, you can move on to the next slide. So this is the pound. This is the um, this is the alleyway, like where this is the entrance where it'll take place. We have a rough color script kind of for what we're trying to go for. So the city is all blue. And when they approach the pound, it gets all pink with these neon lights. Thank you to Aberdeen's friend Celeste for doing the wonderful logo. It looks completely fantastic. And those are just concepts for the backstage and the stage. We are still working those out. And uh, this um, sequence week was definitely a chance to test out a lot of like kinks and how the style would present itself. But I think it was successful. 
you can move on to the next slide. And I can also pass this on to Alex because she did these, but these are just more explorations for the dressing room and the dressing room we used in sequence week since like this is Janice's dressing room who's a very bright, bubbly character in comparison to Fifi, we really wanted that to be evident in her room. And also Ducky Door, because it's funny. And Alex can speak next. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like uh, Sophie said, this is just a um, kind of like a re redo of the um, the initial uh, changing room. So because like some things have changed in the story. So uh, as you can see in the bottom uh, left corner, we have an orthographic view of like some objects that would probably be around in this room. So I decided to go with the one on the uh, the right. So with like a, a little changing room, two vanities, uh, like a little couch, some amps and uh, guitars and microphones and some things like that. Uh, and as you can see on top, we have the final layout of the of one of the shots of the um, changing room. So I. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, going for a lot more warmer vibe and contrast with the city outside, a lot more mellow, a lot more happy, more calming. And uh, yeah, we can't get enough of uh, the doggy, the doggy related items like um, the um, uh, bone rug, bone bag, doggy door, you know, things like that. So uh, and you can see there's a KK slider for to any of you Animal Crossing fans, a little poster, a little Easter egg there for you. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And so, props, um, either Nick or Eden can take this away as they had a big hand in figuring out um, the logistics of everything here. Uh, Nick, I'll pass this on to you since you did a lot. All right. So, uh, so what we have for props here is essentially uh, trying. So the biggest thing or what we focused on for sequence week was essentially trying to narrow down just like basic essentials. Uh, so for what we had for Janice, we had like, you know, because in one of the scenes, she's interacting with like lipstick and a mirror. So like there's that as well. The sort of the outer parts of the uh, the alleyway, the velvet ropes, like things like that. And so a lot of it is just trying to at least one, make it dog themed and two, also line it in with the characters. Uh, one that we actually that we actually spent a lot of time on were the guitars. And so a big thing that I wanted to do, because I'm a little bit of a music nerd myself, is uh, to further illustrate the dichotomy between like Tilly and Fifi that we thought that uh, that we thought that at least like okay give them like competing guitar brands like the big two Fender and Gibson so like uh, Fifi has a flying V uh, Tilly has a Stratocaster so like that kind of further sort of uh, puts it together what you see there is that that's sort of the guitar case that like maybe Fifi has and like, a lot of what Tilly we want to do with Fifi, Fifi that. Oh, sorry. I think I heard an echo. Uh, so essentially, uh, so we thought for Fifi to have her stuff more torn up, kind of like, you know, messy, covered in decals and things like that. Tilly's a lot more like prim, proper, pristine, like all of her stuff is cleaner. And uh, aside from that, there's also a little van that uh, gets to uh, scroll across the screen. Uh, my group members, uh, like they, they made sure to like save me a vehicle design. So I, I am forever appreciative of that. What that is essentially an homage to the uh, to the van in the intro sequence from Lego Rock Band. Like there's like a VW Samba van that the band kind of travels around into. So that was kind of my nod to that. It just like make it more kind of dog themed. We can go to the next slide. Yeah, that's uh, that's what we got so far. We hope you enjoy the sequence. Yep, the end. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess now we'll present our film. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Now we are presenting the film. So. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna show the film right now. Uh, this is the opening sequence. It'll set the stage, and then we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit. And then if you, folks at home, have a question about this, you can write it in the chat, and then we'll ask these guys. But we only have five minutes, so write your questions quick. All right, here we go. Punk Pooch, first bit. Right here, the old Seneca 2D stream.
Wow, congratulations. It played. Well, that was, that was lovely, guys. Don't you think? Don't you think, guys? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Uh, so basically, that was the first sequence. What was the toughest thing? Was there a tough thing that uh, that you encountered? Yeah. Trying to get the boards I think, done? Or, yeah. yeah. I personally believe that the toughest thing was probably trying to figure out, A, what sequence to animate for the film, and B, how to get that 30 second, or under a minute, you know, how to just do that. Because <laughs> we had a lot of ideas that we had to end up to reform and restructure overall just to make it um, snappy. I wouldn't say it was a hard process, but it was definitely one that was having us scratching our heads for um, one or more two days, you know. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But uh, once we were satisfied with it, um, it definitely became a lot easier to get the work done, both the signing work and just getting it complete. So I think probably just saying no to ideas would probably be the hardest for this week. But. Nice. Austin yeah. <laughs> says that they love the doggy door gag. Whose idea was the doggy doors on things? That was my idea. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was it was Aberdeen's, and then you told us to add more doggy yeah, but, doors. Yeah, so I guess it was a team effort. You wanted more doggy doors, so... You gotta love the doggy doors. Mm -hmm. Keeping Very the audience happy. Yeah. Uh, it, and so then what was the most... I see how Nick, Nick put his car in there. Is that the final car? That big uh, truckster thing? It's a fun It's a fun looking truck thinger. It should be. We'll see if we can workshop it a little bit, make it a little bit better. It needs comp work, I think. Mm -hmm. It's nice, though. I saw it and I was like, oh, that's a Nick car. <laughs> No, we, we like reworked the script to get him his car. We like we need a car for this. What are we, we gonna do, guys? A car. We had to give him a car. It felt wrong because mm -hmm. yeah. in one of the original drafts there was a car. Nice. Uh, the toughest one is probably that crowd shot going through there. You want to comment mm -hmm. about that crowd shot? Um. Not. I mean. <laughs> It, it was, I think it was one of the longer shots just because there was two main parts of just crowd and then Fifi running. Um, mm -hmm. But the way um, it was, it was Lex and I's shot, but the way we planned it out is that we purposely um, for the characters, because we knew we didn't have time for rig, for like to rig them all. So we just made them drawing layers, but made them separately. So Lex could easily take the uh, puppet rig of Fifi and um, change her positions in the node view, so, node view um, so she would be able to get that weaving in and out effect. Um, yeah, it wasn't necessarily a hard shot, but it was. It, it did take some thinking to figure out how to efficiently do it and to do it in a way where um, we would have the least hiccups. So, um, yeah. nice. do you have anything else to add, Lex, about that shot as um, a puppet rigger? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think um, just kind of like planning out like all her movements within that crowd was a pretty big sort of like um I don't know it was kind of tricky to plan out um but the boards that were done they were very lovely shout out um <laughs> sorry I'm like my, my yeah. words are all getting mixed up today but dogs like, all week it's okay <laughs> you guys will need some sleep after this okay. for sure okay. All right, um, well, let's, let's cut it off uh, there then, and we'll yeah, pull in the yes. next group. But I think another round of applause for you guys. Great opening sequence for a, 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 a hair-raising film. That's, That's one a, way to describe it. It's a, it's a bad dog pun. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, but, all right, all right. Thank you, Barney. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, let's pull in the next crew. So give it up for the punk pooch. Give your love in the in the chat there, and Woo! we're gonna pull in froggies. So froggies, bye bye. get in here. Froggy time. So that was the first of four films. All right, we got all the frogs in here. Perfect. All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's tell let's tell the crowd about this film. Mia, what's it all about? Hi guys, um, my name is Mia. I'm the director. 
Um, Fly Away Froggy Boy is about a fly um, whose partner is killed by a group of ruthless frogs in a gang, and he goes on a mission to dismantle the frog gang and get revenge. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. Is it inspired by anything? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I watched Sin City months ago, and I was like, that's pretty cool. And then this idea happened to come up. Um, so I guess Sin City took some inspiration. Sin City and Frog and Toad. Okay. Collab. There you go. Perfect. All right. We'll throw it around to your gang here. Introduce the first person and let them introduce the next chain reaction style. So go for it. Um, like I said, I'm Mia. I will pass it on to Miranda. Hello, as I'm I'm Miranda. What's up? <laughs> um, I'm the uh, production manager and the layout lead on Fly Away Froggy Boy, um, and I'm gonna pass it on to uh, Julia. Hey, I'm Julia. Um, I was in the storyboard and animation team, and I also helped out with some layouts when they needed it. And I'll pass it on to Harmon. Yo, uh, I'm Harmon. I was a part of the storyboard team and animation team. Uh, I'll pass it on to Alex. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm the rigging lead, and I also worked on some character. And I'll pass it on to Angeli. Hi, my name is Angeli, and I helped out with layout and animation. And I also was a part of the character design team. And I'll pass it on to Luz. Hey, I'm Luz. Um, I was character design lead. Uh, I'll pass it on to Sarah. Hello, I'm Sarah. Uh, I'm the prop design lead, but I also helped out on layout and a little bit of animation as well. And I'll pass it on to Dara. Hello, I'm Dara, and I was animation lead. And I also helped in storyboard as well. And that was my role for the film. Nice. Is that everybody? Great. Nice job, guys. All right. Well, let's go through your slides and tell us a little bit about each of your roles in this thing. So we are going to swap over to here and I'm going to swap over to that screen and it is running. All right, party on. Um, I can start us off. Please. So here we have one of our posters. Um, if you go to the next slide, uh, we just go over the synopsis really quick, which is, um, you know, our fly absolutely um, hellbent on revenge is going to take down this frog gang. And next slide, please. So we're going to go into some design stuff. Um, everyone pretty much contributed to the character designs, which was really cool. So we got a lot of really cool concept art when coming up um, on what we were going to do with the character. Um, we decided we wanted this like a fly that is sort of the proportions of of what a fairy would be in like a human world. Um, so a bit bigger than usual and has the body of kind of a human, um, which is a bit odd, but we wanted him to be kind of buff. He looks like he's training. He's ready to take down some people. Um, and we got some really great art in the process. I was working a lot with Luce, who's one of the char uh, character design leads. Um, if you go to the next slide, we also did some designs for the frogs. Um, the frog designs are not finalized yet, um, but we're playing around with a lot of size, especially for the frog father, who is like the leader of the frog gang. We want him to be huge, um, towering over the other frogs, playing a lot with like different kinds of shapes for them and just, you know, adding to, the, I guess, how they fit in the world and playing around with the noir aspect of it. Um, and for the next slide, we'll talk about layouts. I'll pass that on to Miranda. Hi, yeah, so um, for layouts, we really had to try and figure out the perfect cross between the recognizable imagery of like a noir 50s kind of setting. Um, like the, the whole sequence that we worked on kind of takes place in McFly's office. So 
um, our biggest challenge was to figure out how to step away from a very human uh, looking office with like human sized furniture and stuff and how to like completely translate it into a setting that looked like it was like built in a swamp built out of like trash and stuff that like a bug would use um so yeah like our biggest challenge is like adapting like actual like human furniture and stuff into um more i guess like fantastical and stylized things that you look like that would look like they would be found in a swamp we decided to go full swamp on this on this bad boy anyway nice. yeah that's <laughs> that's pretty much that's pretty much what we did <laughs> nice changes at the layouts i like where they went good job thank you Should we keep going? For props, um, we'll be passing that to Sarah. Right. Uh, for the props, uh, everybody seemed to be really into the idea of having more uh, rougher line work for the props. It had to be very, you know, black and white for the noir theme, but still a spot of color to be recognizable. Uh, in the end, only uh, one of those props will be used for the sequence, but there's a lot of things we can be that can be used for the sequence for the final film. And yeah, everybody had fun chipping in for the big conspiracy board. You could see to the right there, and uh, I was responsible for making those uncanny portraits, as you can see there. And uh, I'll be passing this on to the next person, so you can go to the next slide. Yeah, right. so I just, so B and Harmon both worked on uh, doing rough shots of boards. This was just one of the color keys, I guess, that I, I did early on just to um, uh, think about the style, how it would look like in this kind of setting. And yeah, if, if Harmon can uh, can get the rest, if he wants to say some stuff. Oh, yeah. We were just trying to get the vibe of like Sin City, Batman, the animated series, like yeah just trying to get that vibe through the boards tell the story in a weird way that was the goal weird yeah we tried lots of different angles and lightning shots and making it very dramatic do you think you guys got it as dramatic as you want right now or is it it's pretty dramatic yeah. <laughs> it's pretty dramatic what we got we're definitely yeah. gonna push it can always um, be pushed. Final. Yeah, More. we're going to push it far. Yes. The flies must be pushed. Yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes because it's funny with these films, we only really know what the what the opening sequence is. No idea where the rest of this is going. So let's hope it all makes sense. Uh, let's keep going then. Rigging. So I was responsible for rigging. Um, our, our characters would fly. I also rigged a few props as well. And it was a fun, thanks to Luce's wonderful design. It, it, it made my job a lot easier to get to, to get this guy down for sequence week. And I had a lot of help from Anda. They were very helpful and their friend Nick as well. Uh, yeah, I shall pass it on to the next slide. For this next slide, I uh, just added some character tests that we did during the development process really quick. And that's pretty much it. Love it. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thank you for enjoying the show. All right. So we're going to kick it off into the film. So you want to say anything else before we kick it in or should we just do it? Looks like Frog's back on the menu. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Thanks, guys. You're tuned in to the Seneca 2D stream. Here we are. Film number two. Fly away, Froggy boy. Public statement that the chief of the fly lease has sanctioned an 8 p.m. curfew to all insectoids after the recent string of murder. These frogs are dangerous. Please stay at your homes at all times. <laughs>
are back. Oh boy. Oh boy, that fly is mad, huh guys? Will he, he get is revenge? Not happy. Is he gonna get revenge, do you think? We can't spoil it. Oh okay. <laughs> you have right. to watch and figure it out. But when can we see it? When is, when can these folks at home and their Lucas is on the edge of his seat here. He wants to watch this. In April. In April? What well, can we show him the whole Leica sooner than that? Yes. <laughs> yes. In December? Yeah. December 15th, I think. I think that's 15th. the day. The Wednesday. 15th of December. Like yeah. up. It's going to be intense, go. though. <laughs> so, uh, we'll ask the same kind of questions. What was the biggest uh, hurdle in getting this out this week? Was there a big hurdle? There was a big hurdle for sure. Yeah, what's that? Which was that we, Barney, you will know, we redid the whole board. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. a big hurdle. We came in with a board. And Barney, you were like, no. And then we redid the whole thing <laughs> on Monday. Yeah. But we did it in like two hours. Um, yeah. Like, it was pretty cool. Like, we all had a giant whiteboard. And then we just drew it all out. And we were all like, yes, let's do this. Let's cut that. Uh, no, this doesn't work. Oh, we should switch these two. Like, literally, yeah, it was crazy. That was, I think, the biggest hurdle. We were like, oh, my God, how are we going to do it? And then we totally did it. Mm -hmm. Like, the but team is so It's so great. much stronger now, though. Don't you agree? I would agree, Barney. You annihilated us, but it was for it was uh -huh. for a good cause. Now it makes sense. You can follow what's happening. It's not just some weird side shot. So great, great job on banding together and boarding it on the on the whiteboard. That was awesome. On the fly, some might say. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're in charge some of the dad puns that. now. Yeah, and yeah. I'll be here all week. <laughs> yeah. Um, great. So then, what was the what was the easiest thing this week? Was there anything that came easy? Don't I think that. the, I think like it really started to come together once we decided on the storyboard. Like the storyboard was like the scariest part, um, because we went from having an idea kind of to being like, oh no, we need to completely restart. That was like the scary part. And then once we had those scenes and we were able to split them up, and everyone was like, oh, I'll do this scene, I'll do this scene. That's when everything started falling into place, and it was just was just a matter of making all the pieces and fitting them all together. Mm hmm. Lucas was asking, um, how was that radio stomp in perspective with the rig? Was that done with the rig or was that done classically? That star is shot. You can that was done that. with the rig. With the rig. I had to uh, absolutely just mutilate that rig just to make it work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think actually another easy thing is that once everyone was assigned their shots, we, for the most part, the animation got done relatively quickly. I mean, we did the most amount of revisions that we could in, in the time that we had, but... I think for for sequence week, I think we got something uh, some something really nice to show, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, that's got a great feel. I like him when he knocks the radio off the table and then it's perfectly standing up on the ground, just like <laughs> nah nah. <laughs> it's a metaphor. Yeah, it's like, it's mocking him. He cannot be destroyed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like Chumbawamba. It's like Chumbawamba. <laughs> Anywho, um, great. So then uh, sound and sound effects plays a lot in this film. Who's in charge of that, getting that out the door? Because that's that's a big part of this. Um, I did pretty much like all the editing um, of putting everything together. I have a lot of editing experience. So that was very fun for me. But um, we had uh, my partner, Kyle, who voiced McFly, was the radio guy, and is also the Foley artist, and did all that stuff for us. Um, shout out to Kyle. Thank you so much. Um, that was pretty cool. Like, we were kind of thinking a lot about, like, you know, we're in this, like, fly city that's also a dump, and just like, okay, how are we going to make this noir? So thinking about music and then adding sound effects. Um, it was uh, It was interesting. It was pretty interesting and cool. And I'm excited to like, deep dive more into that, maybe adding um, fly noises Ooh, and yeah. stuff. That's a Frog great idea, especially in the that, distance. Yeah, that wide shot. Mm -hmm. That's great. Two points for Mia. All right. Anything else in closing before we jump into the next group? Uh, no flies were harmed in the making of this movie i don't think 
but the frogs will be. The so frogs will sorry. be. Sorry. Yeah. There was one fly that was harmed in the making of this movie. That's true. That is true. That's true. Did you eat him? There was one in the studio with us. Yes. Yeah, well, we I did. think we killed it. Killed we him. did. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, he'll get reincarnated, maybe. Hopefully. It's beautiful. Well, thanks, guys. That was that was a lot of fun, and I'm super excited about seeing this film further on. So, yay! Thank yay. you, everybody. Give it up! Give it up in the in the chat, or comment too. If people like commenting, that, I hear that's even even better for live streams. So, comment in the chat as well as underneath, and like and subscribe and all that stuff. Right, right, Julia. Okay. Uh, so you guys get out of here, and we'll bring in Paint It. Thanks so much. Paint It, come on in. There they are. The blue. The blue and the red. All right. Jenny, kick us off here. Hello, hello. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> is, is there echo? Oh, sorry. No. There's, like, some echo in my end here. Are you watching the stream as well? <laughs> okay. Um. So, uh, hi. Right. Uh, I'm Jenny E. I'm the director for Painted, and um, this is a story that takes place in this monochromatic cyberpunk city ruled by the screen, a giant digital screen on a building in the center of the city, and a young graffiti artist named Emma Starr refuses to be part of the system and continues to spread her color art with passion. So as usual, she, she seeks to find the perfect place to paint out her vision before being apprehended. And that's the that's what the story is about. That's a great story. That's a great oh, story. Timely. Okay. It's a timely story. So Jenny, let's throw it around to the rest of your gang and see what else has been, who else has been doing what. Okay, so um, I'm going to introduce you to our production manager, Hannah. No, I'm mute here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so Jenny are in the same room, that's why there was feedback, but hi, um, I'm Painted's production manager. Um, yeah, I produced this production uh, it was pretty fun making spreadsheets and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, and I liked bossing people around. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm going to introduce our next person. Um, I actually don't remember who's next. And so I'm just going to throw it to Cassidy. <laughs> uh <laughs> I think it was supposed to be Eden, but hi, I'm Cassidy. Um, and uh, I am a co-storyboard lead and I also did some animating. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll pass it on to Eden. Hi, I'm Eden Jung. I am the rigging lead. So all the characters, all the guts were rearranged by me and the character itself was drawn by Mara. Shout out to Mara. Um, I'll send it off to our animation lead, or one of our co-animation leads, uh, Lynette. Uh, hello there. Um, as Eden said, I am one of two animation working on Painted. Um, had a great time with some of the action shots in this film. Um, I'm, I will probably talk more about it later, but for now, I will pass it on to Sophie. Hey, I'm Sophie. I'm the character design lead. Um, I was in charge of Star's uh, design. She already sort of had a design, but I was sort of uh, trying to adapt her to help her better fit um, being rigged for the film. Um, and I had a lot of fun with that. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Albert, who did a lot of uh, the comping stuff. <laughs> Hi, my name my name is Albert, and I was a part of the background team, and I did, as Sophie said, I did most of the comp compositing, uh, and yeah, that was my role on for the sequence. I'll pass it on to. Uh, I don't know, but I'll pass it on to Robin. Uh, hello, I'm 
Robin. I'm one of the animation leads. I helped with the storyboard and cooked up a lot of shots. Pretty cool. I'll pass it on to Emily. Hello. Hello. Uh, I am Emily. I worked, I did some Vizda stuff as mostly within backgrounds and I did background shots and that kind of stuff. So I am going to pass it on to Mara. Hi, I'm Mara. I did some prop design. I did a little bit of character with Eden. We did the bots together. And what I'll do, oh, I helped in rigging. Shout out rigging team. Eden and Lynette, yes. <laughs> And we have two people who are missing um, our background lead. Uh, that is Allie she, um, she, and Robin, which is our art director, are unfortunately in California having fun without us. And they're at Lightbox right now. And we hope uh, we wish them the best, but unfortunately they could not make this meeting today. But yeah, they're, they're, they're part of this too. Here in spirit, that's for sure, Aziz. Okay, great. Well, let's jump uh, wait into... For, what about Robin? Oh, we got Robin. We got both the Robins. We did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Hannah's on it. Okay, so let's uh, let's go into the presentation, shall we? I think we shall. So let's jump over to that screen and share it and talk about it. You guys can see it? Yep. All right. Yeah, so this is our film. I think I got a little too nervous, so I accidentally said the synopsis first. But yes, I'm the director, and I also helped out in the story, and I'm the other story lead. But yeah, paint it. And can you give us uh, a little... Next slide? Well, give us a little history of uh, graffiti. So that graffiti is here. You're a graffiti artist. Can we set the stage a little bit on that side of it? Um, pardon, sorry, I didn't get that sentence. Oh, you're a graffiti artist, and you you designed the logo and that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, the logo was uh went through some um, different designs. I designed the first version, and then it went through Soph to get it more. Um, just more popping and more readable. Um, I'm not exactly a graffiti artist. I really like graffiti, but I haven't done it exactly myself yet. But I'm just always being interested in it. Nice. So you guys are going to take a, a class trip down to the railroad we tracks? We already did. We went to Graffiti Alley and uh, marked our spots. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. So yeah, the synopsis is about, is in this monochromatic futuristic city, a graffiti artist tries to find perfect place to paint before she gets captured and eliminated by the ruler of the city, the scream. And um, yeah, and I'm gonna pass it to our character lead. All right, so like I said before, my main job was to um, fix star so that she would be riggable uh and make life easier for the rigging team um that wasn't really what happened because it turned out her hair was diabolical to have to rig <laughs> um we did lots of exploration with her um but in the end we decided to keep it simple just because we wanted to let all the effects look extra crazy against like uh a more neutral uh, background. Um, and there's also a pigeon that isn't shown in the um, in the sequence week uh, video, but he will appear later on. So stay tuned. <laughs> um, but yeah, my it was a lot of fun to like do explorations on her. She's just super dynamic and fun to pose and animate and everything. Um, I'm super happy that I got to work on her. Teeth are you cool. did great. Thank you. Round of applause. She's oh. spinning. 
Yep. And there's her rotation. We sort of, we had to cheat the hair a little bit, but because she's so graphic, I think it works pretty well. Um, and yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> nice. Okay. I did a little bit of the screen and maybe even worked on the bots. So originally the bots had like a circle design in the middle. Um, but we decided to make them like look a little bit more like the screen. So we added more like rectangle-y shape, but we're going to fix it after because to make animation a little bit easier. And we're not seeing the screen today. The screen is for later. Okay. And that's all for this slide. Thank you. And the props, I did the props. Um, Jenny pretty much already designed them. They were like really nice looking. I just like did a turnaround stuff. So these are the turnarounds. And yeah, we were having a lot of trouble doing the shadows and rigging, but we figured it out. So yay. And, and how that's does, all. How does spray paint work in this futuristic world for our viewers at home? Oh, it's like a compressible spray paint. So there's like a button at the top. I mean, in the right, there's like a little compressed version and the button, you click it and it pops up and you'll see it soon. So. So the paint takes up no space is what you're saying. It takes up little space. Little space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll go with you on that journey. <laughs> Hi. Oh, <laughs> feedback. Um, so we went through a lot of concept art just to really get the feeling and design of the city down because we are staying in the city for this entire short. Um, we really wanted to emphasize that fake digital feeling of screens and blue light and just being like completely surrounded by it all the time. We really wanted to add contrast between the city where Star lives in and star as an individual because she stands out immensely um and unfortunately Allie and robin could not <laughs> be here with us today to go through it in more detail but they did wonderful explorations with using different colors and different textures to really get that gritty feel of the of uh, the futuristic city that we are in can i add yeah. <laughs> if i can and that kind of stuff since we're talking about backgrounds that's okay um albert and i also helped out so unfortunately allison and robin are over in uh california right now but me and albert were also mm -hmm. backgrounds a lot of this was going into this alley created an insane like fun textured world and that sort of thing so we had to go and we had big ambitions going with different textures shapes this and that and then going to sequence week we learning how to tone it down not so it like simplify but get the message and the point still across so we tried different hues and that kind of stuff and they ended up going on uh, a really like the the kind of blue that you see when you're going to bed and you have your phone right in your face and that sort of thing so some of this not kind of like it it's a much more colder kind of environment to stars bright you know warm colors she's kind of this life in this abandoned city and you guys did such a great job <laughs> nice job yeah it's beauty yeah as well as there's some more explorations ali did a huge um numbers for the master backgrounds here and then there are some other explorations that we did uh using colors how the buildings are going to be next to each other and what we what details we would use so for example uh lots of ladders and kind of rows across to indicate kind of like windows but also putting on a lot of screens so the screen having a presence throughout the entire city kind of like a watchful Kind of it reminds me of 1984 kind of style the looming presence of the screen love it love it and that's it i guess yeah and that's it thank you so that, much that is it all right well let's uh jump into <laughs> jump into the films uh anything we want to say before we jump into things here <laughs> it's like no no we've talked enough enjoy <laughs> enjoy we'll see on the other really side really epic yeah all right film number three paint it
we're back. We got painted all over your face. Yellow. They're so sad. I feel sorry for those bots now. Oh, don't feel sorry. <laughs> but they're not getting paid. <laughs> no, okay, fine. But they're batteries. Maybe they're running low. Anyway, it was great, guys. Round of applause. Lovely job. If you have a question, anybody at home in your parents' basement, post it in the chat. We'll see if we can get it answered. ASAP. All right. So what was the hardest thing about the sequence doing it this week? Was there anything that was hard? Um, so uh, the hardest thing really was uh, forgetting parts of the part pipeline a little bit. Um, for example, we were so excited to jump into it and so excited to start actually creating the sequence that we forgot about editing after our storyboards. So we were kind of kind of a bit worried about that and then we also forgot to give the layout team our camera moves for our storyboards as well so it's, it's just mostly like those little things that we didn't really think about that kind of caused some problems also uh some of our animation uh went through some doohickey thing in tomb boom and we had to figure that out um but overall i say that this pr went pretty smoothly overall in the week which great, great work team. <laughs> we all deserve the credit because we all worked together and we had, we made sure to lift each other up and like have different like uh, breaks, made sure to take breaks, little dance breaks too. Dance um, Rasputin several yeah. times. And when we just felt dance too. Bad or stress, we would pull on Just Dance and we would dance along to Rasputin. Um, but yeah, that, that was, mostly all our struggles with this i think i'm gonna add on to this and say despite like a lot of the editing which i think is just i i think i would like to see the school help us prepare a little bit more for sequence week because a lot of this was just we're brand new we were so brand new to this um of course everyone but it being, was a great learning experience this is true um, I think also I can add on to that, uh, not to, you know, I, I'm a little bit sappy, but I also really appreciate, uh, there was a lot of like, like nicely managed in the sense that everyone had time for breaks and there was a few people who pulled all nighters, which thank you so much, especially to rigging team. They went insane for Emma mm -hmm. creating two different versions for her, um, and that kind of stuff. But, uh, on our end for backgrounds, we managed to work together even through the mistakes and get mostly everything done for Wednesday, which was really nice because then we got to, uh, relax a little bit, rest, and then help, um, anyone there for comping team as Albert did and that sort of thing. So yeah, congratulations. Mm -hmm. The thing, yeah, you're right. It'd be nice if we could sit and teach you everything, but we'd be like into the new year with all this stuff. So the the best thing is, is like, this is your, this is your job, figure it out. And through all these mistakes, you've, you've learned more than we can even teach. So, mm -hmm. so congrats to you guys for pushing yourselves. Cause that's the big thing is like now, right now, seven weeks in, we have a good sense of where your films are as opposed to waiting to the new year. So that's great. Cool. Uh, I think you guys, yeah, you did some great uh, dance dance together, which was a lot of fun. Good for morale. Good for your, good for your spine and all that as well. Um, was there anything tricky um, in terms of like you said you you made two rigs of this character? Uh, was it the far away rig and the close up rig, or different colored rigs? Yeah. yeah? So we made uh, about five rigs in total for this film. We made the bot rigs. We made, uh, I think it was five. Um, we made a little tiny Emma for that little distance shot that Lynette did an amazing job on um, and went through hell and high water to get done and fix. Um, we had a huge Emma rig and then we also had an arm rig a little bit, but unfortunately we didn't really use that one um, because it kind of made more sense just to use our normal Emma rig. But the rigging team completely went bananas and we really appreciate it. And it looks pretty seamless <laughs> if, I, if you know, we do say so ourselves. Um, and yeah, there wasn't that much trouble with the rigs because you guys did such an amazing job. No, yep. no. And 
even with uh, for background, I think our only problem was style guide and redoing it so that everyone can follow it. And even then we managed to simplify while still keeping a really nice vibe. Uh, you can tell some differences between like texture where, where the Griff Titty was, where <laughs> she misspelled graffiti into Griff Titty. So seeing where texture, less texture and that sort of thing, but moving forward, we'll just see ends up working for us but i think most of it was pretty seamless um really great job to allison and robin who cannot be here with us today they are dead no i'm just kidding um, <laughs> they are in california and uh uh great job to them for staying up and working so hard on figuring out style bibles and that sort of thing and also like in the middle of production reworking everything so that then we could follow along yeah. awesome well great job great job to you all Great job on film number three here, folks. We're going to give it one more round of applause, and then we'll kick these guys out of here and get in our last film, the old Ballad of the Skipjack and Atticus. So thank you. Paint it. Go on. Go on out thank of here. you to everyone in the chat. Thank Woo. you. All right. Here we go. We have the old Slapjack, Skipjack, snack pack yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we do hell yeah yes yeah. yeah, sir <laughs> all right well let's uh introduce things and get going here uh, yeah so i'm danny i'm the director of this film that we are about to see so it's a film about two cats going on a scam what could possibly go wrong um so i handled mostly boards and sounds so i was story lead and also worked on sounds for this sequence week um before i pass it off to another team member i'm just going to mention our team members who aren't here right now so um we have raf who is our art director sam who is one of our BG Leads, and Leanne, who worked on our animation team. And now I'm going to go pass it off to Tiff. Hi. Yeah, so I was the production manager. And on the film, I worked mostly on sound and also a bit of hand-drawn animation. So I'll pass it over to Bex. Hi, I'm Bex. I was the character design co-lead. And I just worked on a lot of viz dev stuff, so um, turnarounds and posters. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Chris. Hi, my name is Chris, and I was a prop design and the second BG lead on the production. And I also helped out a little with character design. And I'm going to pass off the cut. Oh, um, hi, my name's Kat. I'm co-lead for character. I'm also a prop helper and also a, <laughs> a graphic design. And yeah, and I'm passing off. To Zach. Uh, hello, I'm Zach, and I'm the rigging lead for Skipjack and Atticus. Um, rigging on this project was both really fun and also really difficult at the same time, um, but I'm really proud of what we accomplished. And I am going to hand it off to Jody now. Hello, um, I'm Jody. I slapped together our uh, wagon rig and some of our character rig. Um, I also helped out with uh, character design. And I'm going to pass it off to Matt. Hello, uh, my name is Matthew. I'm one of the one of the two of the animation leads for Skipjack and Atticus. And it's just really fun stuff animating two different cowboy cats with different character character personalities going on between them. And yeah, I'm going to pass it off to Liana now. You're muted, Liana. Leanna, you're muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I'm Leanna. I'm the other animation lead, and I definitely look like this every single day. This is not how we <laughs> make up at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, super okay. stoked to be on this project. It was a lot of fun, a lot of late nights, but yeah, I'm glad it's done, and we can see it now. I'll pass it on to Jaime. Uh, hi. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yes. 
Okay. Yep. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm Jaime. Um, I was on the board team and um, the animation team. And yeah, um, uh, I'm pretty excited to see, uh, to, um, to show all you guys uh, what we got today. Oh, I'm going to pass it on to Franz. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, I'm Franz. I'm part of the script uh, animation and rigging. I'm really excited uh, for this film, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to pass it on to Karen. Hi, I'm Karen. I'm really glad to have worked with everyone on this film. I was on the board team. I helped with some rough animation and with comp. And I think that's everybody. Hey, everybody. Right? Nice. Nice job. You guys, looks like you're wearing some kind of theme going on here. Can I smell I a have theme? a hat, but yeah, I can't wear it <laughs> because I, I'll be end, I'll end up walking cat if I wear my hat. <laughs> so I just axed it. All right. Jody's got a hat, though. Yeah, this is Franz. I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair. That's fair. All right. Well, let's go into some slides and see what you guys got prepared on that side. So here we go, sharing some slides. So there we go. We got a couple of cats. Now, how did this film come to be? Danny, tell us a bit about it. Um, so I actually started formulating this idea, just like picking at it a little over the summer. Um, would you believe that this film was originally supposed to be set in Victorian London and they were supposed to be um, like two like both adults partners in crime but then over the summer i played red dead redemption way too much <laughs> and then i just got i fell in love with the whole western and cowboy genre so i was just like hey what if i take the concept that i'd already started drafting over the summer so like two thieves getting up to some hijinks probably getting caught and just translate that into like a, a western vibe and here it is this is what's become of it and I'm really happy with it. And I can't wait to see where we take it as the year goes on. Now, when when did that change from London to Western? Oh, Before... that changed literally, I think, in August because I was nearing the end of my playthrough <laughs> of Red Dead. And I was just like, I was just really, really into it. And so whenever I would start drafting ideas uh just to further like just more ideation on this pitch before we started doing the official pitch stuff for school it just like it just i just started incorporating more and more western things i think i even have a draft before where i tried to keep the victorian thing but like for some reason there was a cowboy in there and i was like that doesn't make sense so let's just ax that and start all over again so yeah and then by september by the time school rolled around and we were starting to develop the pitch decks for the actual pitch to all our classmates. I was like, yeah, let's hammer down a genre and I think I'm going to be sold on the Western. So I just started to take it off in that direction. Nice. Nice. I like it. I mean, it worked out and you guys really got behind it. So here we are. All synopsis. right, so just a little bit of synopsis on our story. So, scamming the people of Meek Spring was supposed to be an easy job for experienced outlaw Skipjack and his protege Atticus. But things quickly go sideways when they run into Barkley, the meanest, toughest bounty hunter around. Will our duo escape, or will their days of being outlaws come to an end? So, for this specific sequence week, you're, um, we won't see Barkley yet, but we'll see the very first opening intro just when they're about to roll into town and get up to some trouble. Little hijinks. Yep, yeah, so um, just brought back a little bit of the style and feel and like a lot of the major inspirations for this film. A lot of it comes from the bad guys, especially and Rango and a lot of like the snappy zany action that came with like the old Looney Tunes cartoons, a little bit of Kung Fu Panda in there as well. Love it. Uh, yeah, so these are just, this isn't the full board, but I just pulled a few of what I believe to be like our most important beats for this sequence week. So the process for this board was interesting because I did um, a first rough pass based on the script that we'd already written. And I put it up on our Discord 
And what we ended up doing was other board artists on our team, based on my board and the script, did a separate board, like their own take on how they think this opening should go. And then once those boards were done, we kind of came back together again. And then I was able to pick and choose certain shots that I liked from everybody's board. Um, so like um, if one of them did an opening better, then I'd pick that. Um, I think the opening shot of this scene was actually taken from Hymas board and the little character interaction inside the wagon was taken from Karen's board. And yeah, um, I'm going to briefly hand it off to Karen and Jaime if you guys have anything additional to say about our boards. Uh, you got anything to say? <laughs> it was a really interesting process, Frankensigning it all together. Um, I really like seeing how all our shots work together and hooking them up was a process. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I think we worked through it pretty well. And we also had that um, working from the initial Frankenstein board, after that, we presented it to like rig team and animators and we're like, hey, um, is this actually possible <laughs> with our time crunch? <laughs> and then working with them in tandem, once we had kind of like the story down, it was like, how can we keep the same feeling of this shot, but reframe it in a way that won't absolutely murder us for sequence week? And I think we came up with a pretty good solution. And I'm I'm very proud of the board team. Way to go, board team. Yeah, for sure. All right, I think I'll pass this off to Vex and Kat for character design. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll start. <laughs> um, <laughs> so for character design, I think, well, it started out that Atticus was like an old man. So <laughs> there is a lot of like exploration where he's like considerably older. Um, and then we were actually in a really good spot because for character design, so many people contributed. Like, I want to say like half of the team in total just went and did the pass over them. And we just kind of narrowed it down from there what we really wanted. So it was very, it was fun. It was like exploratory. Um, and I think our end product for sequence week ended up being really strong because so many people just threw things in. Um, I'll pass it off to Kat if Kat wants to add. <laughs> Uh, no, I think you covered everything. And I think for Atticus, too, like, everyone was just really into it. It was like, how do we make this old cat, like, very cute, very ball-like? And yeah. <laughs> um, I'll start with this, because I worked on a lot of Skipjack stuff. Um, so... You can kind of see from the designs, we almost always had like a very set vision for him. Um, he hasn't actually deviated that much. It's mostly just been solidifying an art style um, and then making sure Skipjack and Atticus fit in that art style. But we want him to feel very like um, sleazy, um, Nick Wilde-esque. Um, we had a whole Pinterest board for it. And um I think end result wise, we got a pretty good shape language now. He's very angular. He's very pointy. Um, we pretty much kept him very slender, gave him a very like prominent silhouette. So um, yeah, I think I think it looks good. I'm I'm pretty happy with the end result, and I'm proud of how many people contributed to it too. That was the best part of it was narrowing down. Um, like what we want to do based off what other people did. So um, like design wise, it was like an amalgamation of what everyone was working on. And then for colors, um, Jody really helped out with that. Um, so it worked out <laughs> really, really, really cool. And what kind of cat is he? Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't oh, know. He's a, yeah, he's a caracal, which is a I only know it as like cat. the meme of them, like <laughs> the, the big. They just here. they sound they sound very mean. Like yeah. if you hear them, they sound very mean. Uh, I think it's about basically what uh, Vex said about the Atticus is a character design. So we just basically make him like really round, really cute, like 
you want to do like a you want to squish it <laughs> <laughs> and version. maybe like we were thinking maybe we can use him for like a future merch kind of, <laughs> kind of design so yeah <laughs> And this one's I a enjoyed sand, seeing sand cat, right? Yeah, he's yeah. a sand cat. I really enjoyed seeing the process of Atticus just get younger and younger, like as we like honed in on the cuteness. Like it was it was a really fun thing to see. Yeah, yeah and um I guess I'll speak on this because Leanne um isn't in the call, but um so Leanne designed our roadrunner for us. Um, you will see the roadrunner pulling a carriage because there are no horses in this universe. Um, roadrunners are a main form of transportation. And she was also in charge of making the roadrunner trot cycle, which you can see there. And I think it turned out really good. It was hand animated. Roadrunner, roadrunner, 100 miles an hour. Well, yeah, um, I was tasked with making the carriage uh, rider. He shows up for like 0.3 of a second, but I was like, I'm going to put everything into this. Uh, so he he's a coyote um, and he just sits on top and he moves his arms and stuff. But it was really fun to uh, design this character. Um, I also happened to rig him up as well. And he has like basic rigging um, enough that like he looks believably, like, believably bouncing in the scene. So uh, he was a fun one to work with. Where's he headed with this little Where's wagon? Where's he headed? Yeah. We don't know. It's a mystery. He's got apples. He's... Oh, he's probably <laughs> off delivering some goods. And oh, yeah. two people just really happen cool. to hop in the he's back of the wagon. He's just a delivery man. Model, the old age delivery man. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll go with you. Yeah. Wagon. Um, Tell us about the wagon. For the trucks, uh, for explorations, I kind of just try to go for like really wacky, cartoony, interesting shapes. <laughs> Um, yeah, that is what was going on for the explorations. And in the next slide, you see, I uh, decided to settle on a design that was more graphic and kind of like fit in with the design of the rest of our world. Um, as you see in like the, the future slides with the background design that are uh, my co BG lead standard. And then you rig this. Yeah. And I rigged that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I created a rig that could do a three fourth turn and a profile turn. Um, mm -hmm. for this shot and it turned out pretty decent. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Nice design. Yeah. Good job. Okay. <laughs> um, as for the apple, um, it came like really late for like I think it came in a second pass for the for the storyboard and like everyone's pretty busy. So I just like, hey, can you like can you throw that to me? Like can, can you do the apple? And I'm like, okay, say less. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I was doing the poster at the same time too. So I was like juggling between the apple and the and the poster. And yeah, I, think it's so I just good. did like a separate uh, variation of the apple. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you. Meek Springs. Um, Who's got who came up with the name of Meek Spring? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Based on anything <laughs> or just a funny word play? I was just like, I mean, it could still change, but I was just um thinking of because it's supposed to be a quiet town. And I was like, quiet, quiet. What's a synonym for quiet that isn't quiet? <laughs> like, oh, okay. I think Meek works because Quiet Spring doesn't have a nice ring to it. And there it is. There it is. Okay. Good. Um, I'm gonna be speaking on behalf of Raph and Sam, I guess, for this. That's what that was. I was volunteered as tribute. So um <laughs> basically, um for the layout, a lot of the work started off pretty experimental and just focusing on a cool relationship with um like lineless art and line art. So creating um, I guess, an environment that like could balance the two so we could really experiment with foliage and also just experiment with like how we wanted to frame shots what we wanted to make pop and stuff so that was a really cool thing they worked on um 
we also incorporated a few different styles. So obviously like old Western. Um, and then I think last week we started moving into like looking at um, like old New Mexico architecture too. And they kind of really merged that into something that was really special. And I think they did a great job. Um, I also know Chris wants to speak a little bit on it. Um, yeah, so as uh, Kobiji lead, I worked with my co-lead Sam and with our, our director Raf to kind of marry the line and lineless styles of backgrounds in our layouts for sequence week. Um, it was mostly Sam figuring out like the color and making it harmonious and fitting in with the world. And me and Raf focused on like what we wanted, what direction we wanted to go for like the line of it, uh, section of our of our layouts. Nice. Nice. Here's some more. Um, yeah, these are just um, more explorations people on the team did. Um, a lot of foliage explorations. That was, I know, a hurdle for us to get over. Um, just because I think we did a few first passes and we got some crit that it just felt like they were too um, like shaded for the environments we were working on. So um, there was more passes on that, but I think what we ended up with was really solid and looks really good. Totally. Then you're like, it's a, it's a desert town. There's not many vegetables growing. Yeah, that too. Um, just more layout. These are just different shots from sequence week. Nice, nice crazy perspective going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did a really good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one is. I know this one is cool because this is the reusable background so this actual file is like insanely big <laughs> so that we can zoom in on certain parts without losing quality so that they didn't have to make separate um layouts for each one um we did figure out like a problem with doing it that way wherein the if you zoom in the camera the line the line weights aren't like consistent anymore with the characters mm -hmm. but it was a good thing to figure out during sequence week so that we can address it for the actual film moving forward mm -hmm. that's all part of the game you guys are playing the game <laughs> uh, this one was a really cool layout too because um you'll see it in the film but this was meant to be for this was meant to be moving behind the uh, wagon while the wagon is moving and you'll see that shot coming up in the film Nice. Yeah, Perfect. so that's our presentation. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, especially to Kat and Vex, who did uh, the opening poster that you saw and then that ending poster mm -hmm. that you saw, respectively. They killed it. Yeah, that's great. Love the nice toothy texture in those trees and stuff, too. So mm -hmm. this is exciting. Exciting to see. Here we go. Anything else you want to tell the audience before we watch these? crazy cats get into mischief team can i get a yeehaw yeah yeehaw, yeehaw. 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 <laughs> all right oh, yeah. and here we go the fourth and final film of the night the ballad of skipjack and atticus Lou, quiet town. <laughs> oh, it don't get no better than this. <laughs> Are you sure you're up for this, kid? I am. You won't regret bringing me along, Skipjack. They won't know what hit him. All right, all right. Just save some of that for our adoring audience, will you? Now, you ready? Good. It's showtime. Boom. And we're back. Nice job. Nice job. Coyote howls from the crowd. <laughs> remember folks if you have any questions for this final group put them in the chat and we'll throw them at them 
So we'll come back at you guys. I'll throw the question. First question. Here we are. What was the toughest thing this week? Was there a tough thing? Some people said the boards were the toughest. Some people rigging. Some people, uh, I don't know. Honestly, Somebody... rigging was pretty fun. I didn't find it too bad. It was like putting puzzles together. Um, the stress was mainly trying to get them finished uh, quick enough so that people could actually use them for their shots. Uh, but it turned out really well. And uh, seeing it like uh, used was really like, oh my God, you're using the thing I made. <laughs> it yeah. was really nice. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing is seeing it all finally come together in all the all the years of your study. And you're like, everyone's working together. Everyone's making, I did that. I made that cactus. Well, that's great. So nothing, nothing was hard. You guys just yahooed and galloped along. And... I, think, I think I'll throw it to our, to our animators. But um, I know like playing around with Z depth was like, Cause I know um towards like the end stretch, like all of our Z depth stuff was causing problems with calm. <laughs> like trying to add shadows while everything is like <laughs> is like pushed back or like pushed too forward and it's like messing with it. I think we got it in the end, but like it it was a it was a tough one from what I could see the cop team trying to figure out. And yeah, yeah um animation. Do you guys encounter anything in particular i can't speak on that because i didn't animate for sequence week but what do y'all think uh, uh i can speak to oh, it a little sorry, bit Liana. oh zach you want to go first <laughs> no no you go first you go first <laughs> um so in terms of animation i think it was just um getting used to the rigs and like the character design as well uh, they both have different challenges with Atticus. He's very small and compact, which like any big limb movements are really hard to do and to get the look right without like compromising volume. And with Skipjack, it was that he's so tall and lanky that you also have to pay, pay attention to like limb lengths and not making him look really awkward. So yeah, that was a challenge that I found to be like um, a little tough for me initially, but once I got used to it, they were decently smooth rigs for sequence week. Some people are asking, who did the voices? Can you guys give away that mystery? Oh, um, special shout out to Amy Lee, who voiced Atticus, and Nick from Punk Pooch for voicing Skipjack. He's a good dog. Yep. Great job. I've been listening to their voices all week, doing the sounds. <laughs> yeah, scrubbing that audio, doing lip sync for oh hours. <laughs> lip sync, um, sound effects. Uh, I was a sound lead. And also, um, when I was, I, I hear the background music in my sleep. <laughs> yeah, Amy's voice is in my head all the time now. She's my narrator. That's exactly what she wants. <laughs> <laughs> she's winning i guess the other difficult thing was like finding certain ambience noises because i was also helping tiff um tiff handled a lot of the character and prop sounds i was working on background music and the ambience it's hard to find desert ambience that doesn't have insane whooshing wind like every single royalty free track that i looked up was like the wind is just going crazy and i'm like I get it, that happens in a desert, but we don't have insane wind in our opening sequence and that would look really weird. So it took a, it took some digging in free sound to find the right ambience that I wanted, but got there eventually. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanna say something as well. I also agreed with what Leanne was saying about how getting used to the rigs at first was a bit tough, especially because of the details on Skipjack, for example, that he has. But, his shoes and the face markings and the stripes. It was a lot to keep track of. And although it was tough, it was still fun figuring, figuring it out. And it felt really good, nice and accomplishing at the end when finishing up the shots. Yeah. So just want to add that there. And I think Zach, you wanted to say something as well. Oh, honestly, not really. Like Leanna touched on everything I wanted to say. Um, but um, yeah, like I was the rigging lead for this project. 
Um, <laughs> and it was very interesting because the character designs are absolutely amazing, but they're also probably the most detailed things I've ever had to rig. <laughs> and so, so it, there was a lot of pressure to like get those done so animation could start. And when you think you're finished the rig, you're actually not because then you have to revise a bunch of stuff. So it was a very interesting process, both making them and using them, but it was super rewarding. And I'm really happy with what everybody created. Yeah, I, I would touch on that too, because I know on the character design side, um, it was a lot of collaboration between teams because like we would do a character design or we would start on it and then we would have to change it for the rigs. But then sometimes the rigs would be started and we'd be like, oh, we have to change this for the character design. So it was a lot of back and forth, but it worked because um, they look fantastic. Like the rigging team did a fantastic job and the collaboration part of it was so fun too. But it was definitely like one of the harder things, I think, biz dev wise, challenging. It was it was also a little bit challenging to uh, follow the, the storyboards exactly according to the way the characters are posed because I found that animating with the rigs, it was a bit the proportions would be a bit different from the board. So figuring uh, I had the experience figuring out loopholes or like different ways to get around that to try to follow the boards as much as possible. But uh, it, it did make the experience more fun and challenging in the end. So I had a I had a I had a better time doing it. So. Uh yeah. Um, and like uh, going off what Matt said, um, like following the boards because I was also on the board team and the animation team. Um, <laughs> some of the boards weren't like um the clearest in the acting, so I did have to just like make stuff up on the spot, and because there was a lot of like dead time in my shot, so um I had to just um keep filling up all this empty empty space of just no acting with like really subtle acting and that really added up um which which basically turned like a pretty easy shot into a pretty horrible <laughs> nightmarish shot because there was also issues with the layout where things were like i had to layer like four things over each other like the background there were overlays there were like three overlays it was pretty bad and then after when everything was finally finished the uh, comp just didn't want to work for two hours yeah comp was a struggle <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of know, moving I parts, great. but you it was it. so much fun too. Karen was losing her mind <laughs> towards the end of, of today. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of multiple moving parts along with the rig animation. We also have two hand drawn animated things, so we have two separate hand drawn birds. Um, the Raven at the end was done by me, and the the Roadrunner was done by Leanne, who isn't here right now, but. <laughs> watching Jaime try to figure out how the carriage should be timed with the Roadrunner pulling it and how it, it should be on ones, twos, whatever. And then watching Karen have the struggle of actually physically putting it together was quite um, stressful at the last moment. We pushed well, through, though, and it turned yeah, out great. Yeah, yes. yeah. You guys we pushed through, through, and the consensus in the chat was all the sequences were really well done, and people are very excited to see the finals. So we'll give you guys one last round of applause. Excellent job, you guys. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah. So thanks. Yeehaw. Thanks. 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 I think we're going to sign off unless you guys have anything else you want to say. <laughs> Just a big heart. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, folks at home, for watching. It's been a real pleasure serving up these nice hot sequences fred, fresh fresh off the presses here at Seneca 2D right here in, in Toronto, Canada. Yeah, if you're not, not from around here, come back in December. We're going to play the Leicas with the opening sequences. Uh, that'll be December 15th, I think. It's a Wednesday night. And then the final cartoons will be done in April. I don't know what date exactly, but I'm sure if you follow us on Instagram or Twitter, or right here on uh, the YouTube, then you'll be able to check those things out. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you real soon, right here at the old Seneca 2D. Yeah.